this video, we're going to go through an introduction to the estimate costing screen, and we're going to look at things like moving the categories around, deleting them, and copying them, and also look into searching through the price list items and adding your own into the pricing as well as some of the print options. The first thing that we're going to cover uh, is if we jump into the categories, you'll notice that in this example, each category is pre-filled with a bunch of items. And the first mention here is that this costing screen is really kind of best thought of as a checklist. So the costings that we've started with here are the build exact default ones, which is going to be, as we've mentioned before, for a single story house. Keep in mind that further down the track, you are completely fine to set up your own templates and customize the way that it starts your new estimates. So moving forward, uh, this certainly may change for you, but really, again, what we're looking at now is just our standard set. Now, a couple of things to look at straight up. As you're going through and doing your estimate, you'll have this complete, not complete, and not required status button. So the idea here is that as you're going through, uh, if you've completed, say, the rental items category, you can just simply take it off. And if you don't need them, uh, you can go not required. And really the biggest thing here and what we're trying to do is, is basically just help things get out of your head. So rather than trying to remember, you know, hey, I've done everything up to concrete or whatnot, you can visually see it. And this works even better for teamwork. So if there's several people working on something, they can all go in and see exactly what's been up to without having to go through every single category and double check. A special mention here is that this not required button, um, if, for example, you have a quote and it's sent out to a client and then they come back and say, uh, hey, look, don't worry about the landscaping, for example, or painting is a, another really common one, uh, they might say, look, we'll just tackle that ourselves. When you click the not required button, it'll, you'll see here that it actually put a line through the cost. And what that really does is we'll actually remove the cost of the category. So it's really easy if you want to sh show and hide costs, especially if you have a customer then come back a week later and, and change their mind. So it's a way better way than deleting the actual category uh, is again, just to hide it and it will go away. Uh, and again, you can reverse that later on. So that's the first thing. The second thing we should talk about is once you're done in a category and how you go edit and search uh, and just really get the items moving in there. So you can edit a category and that will allow you to change it in here and you'll notice the boxes will change. If you are slightly impatient with software like I am, a little trick here is you can just double click it and it does the exact same thing. I generally use that all the time. And once you're in here, what you're able to do is really just type whatever you want. So if you start typing, let's say permit for example, what will happen is you are able to put in your own item or it will start recommending items for you. So that leads us into the searching for items and ultimately the catalog section. Now, as far as what this video will cover, it's really just about search tips. So a couple of things uh, to mention here uh, is this little quick list, that's what we call it, uh, will only show about 10 things. So a great example will be say, if you're searching for timber, for example, it's gonna max out pretty quick and we have 10 things here, but we still might not find what you're looking for. So we can narrow the search down by doing things like uh, putting, putting a space in and entering another specification. We can add in more space and continue to add more and more. And what it's doing is it's just drilling down to eventually find what we're needing. You can also use this browse button here. And this is a, a kind of more detailed view of your build exact world. And this will allow you to sort by categories if your price list have categories. Right now we're looking at the build exact standard list. So our build exact list has the categories, which is fantastic. And you'll also notice that you have a drop down here for other price lists. So if you do have multiple lists, you can go through and select from those multiple lists. One thing absolutely worth mentioning though, and especially as we're going through here is as I was saying, uh, permit council, and what I want to say is how much it costs me. So I'll put in this much, for example, and if I want to save that into my price list for next time, I can actually use this browse button for a slightly different function, which is basically to force it to search for, knowing full well it's not going to find it. And it's going to go and say, yep, didn't find it. And I'm going to suggest then that we save that. But what I've done here is I've just added my own price list. Now, we won't cover how to do that in this video, but we do have videos specific for how to load and create price lists. I can just simply pop it in there and save it, and now it's there for next time. 
So again, next time I go back looking for that permit, I've then got my price list as well, another price list coming back as results. So a really cool trick is that you can save prices on the go. A couple of little things in here, you can delete or copy lines. So you can do exactly the same thing with categories. You can copy whole categories, delete whole categories, and a really good use of this copy category button. And what we see people do sometimes is they say, hey, for example, I might have multiple bathrooms in a house and they'll quote all the bathrooms and then just simply copy it and amend it and that becomes bathroom two. So we'll also see the same thing happening for multiple units where you get roof unit one, uh, unit two, et cetera, et cetera. Another point here is you are perfectly fine to go and reorder and move items. So these little dots on the side allow you to move it and you'll see that I'm just grabbing it and holding it in my mouse and it's gone green. And when it goes green, that's when I can let it go. And it'll just drop into that new place and that works exactly the same for items or for categories, um, same exact principle. And a really quick side mention here is if you ever wanna go move things between categories, I can just click this little tick here and there's a little move button here that will allow me to move it into a new category. So that's really helpful if you have a whole bunch of items and they're just in their own categories, you can very easily shift them across. Last thing I wanna mention here is the cog on the screen. And as I've said in other videos, there is a cog on almost every screen. And generally we hide the print buttons in here or settings in here. So I just wanna have a quick mention specifically this one, the categories and the items. The categories and items is essentially a bill of quantities. So there's a really detailed run through um, of basically what you're looking at on the estimate screen. So all the quantities, all the costs, it's gonna, um, it's gonna have your markup, your total cost, your tax, etc. And it's perfect for a printout that you can just take on site and have all of your orderable quantities in there. So as far as printing it out for yourself, this is perfect. The other ones we have in here, um, if you wanna have a look at it, uh, just the kind of trade breakdown, you can go see the cost category total. This one's really good. And if you just wanna look at the allowances or the PS items, this is a really good report in here as well. And we'll talk more about these items in another video.